Maureen, come up and share your word. Okay, okay. Yeah, um, Pastor Cheryl asked, <coughs> asked me to write it out, <coughs> and I felt, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> that this is what the Lord was saying, and it's direction for us, direction for the church, direction for every believer. In Jesus' name, Father, help me, God, anoint the ears of the hearers, Father God, that it's, it's a pure word, Father, in Jesus' name. As we, enter in, as we enter into the new year, we're entering a new season. We must move with God and in God and, and in God or be left behind. We are the called, we are the called ones, the ecclesia. We are to be his voice. We are deputized to execute his will on this earth. Not to be the voice of the world, but to the, be the voice of heaven. Not to speak what we have, but to speak what we want. <coughs> uh, to not, not to, but to speak what we want, which is his will. We know what he wants because of his word. Not to let CNN tell us what is happening, but to tell CNN by shaping the news, by shaping the news, nations, and governments through prayer and his word. When God created the earth, he spoke. Right from the beginning, he showed us the power of his words. We are to declare and decree a thing, and it will be established. Blessing and cursing is in the power of the tongue. We're to speak righteousness, not, not, not defeat. We are to crush the enemy, and we are to crush the enemy, bind, and refuse to allow him to function. We have the power. We, we, just, we just give up too soon. We must hammer the spirit realm with the voice of the spirit, which is praying in tongues. Just hammer it and don't let go. We have such power and authority, and, with, and we've wasted it. We've just wasted it. We must speak the language of heaven. If you, if you went to a place, uh, if you went to France, you would speak French. And if you went to Germany, you'd speak German. And you went to Russia, you'd speak Russian, because that would help you to navigate your environment. When we pray in tongues, we speak heaven's language. <laughs> His his pure will, when we speak in tongues, we speak his language, his pure will. No filters, no flesh, no, no opinion. Yeah. He is the potter. He is the potter, and as we pray in tongues, we give him the clay. That God will transform the earth through our tongues, and he wants to. He wants to. He is imploring us, he's Im he's imploring us to use this gift as it has been given to us, it has been given, it has been given and is for everyone. It's not just for some, it's for everyone. Everyone sitting in this room, every born again believer. Um, God will not withhold his power from those who walk uprightly, and those are his born again believers. It is for every believer. And the more we pray in tongues, the stronger, sharper, clearer his voice and his will will become as we speak his language. It's heaven's language. Amen. Amen. As we war in tongues, we defeat and demolish the enemy, upending his plans, even shaping the will of mankind. We know God will not override our will, but by praying in tongues, he can reshape the will of man by a process. He reshapes it. That's how our loved ones get saved when we pray for them. And nothing looks like it's happening. He's reshaping them. Uh, by praying and we can reshape the will by a process. Unfortunately, here we go. Unfortunately, in past seasons, we've stopped short of victory. It requires faith, perseverance, time, and setting our eyes on the prize, which is the goal line. Not shifting, changing our focus, because nothing seems to be happening. Because it's happening. It is happening. In Jesus' name. So... Um, I pray, Father, that you will impart 
that fervent tenacity to us this night, every one of us, Father, that never give up spirit. For us, oh God, help us to move to that place where the world has nothing in us. That place, God, where we lay our lives before you as the author and the finisher of our faith. In Jesus' name. Did you notice how her word encompassed what everybody said? Now, she had no idea. This is how God works. So now bear with me, okay, for five minutes. You can time it. Five minutes, Five, five minutes. Watch out. Do it, do it quick, I was sitting. I was sitting in my rocking chair at 4.30, uh, 4.30, Ginger. 4.30, I was sitting in my rocking chair. I get up at 4 o'clock usually and go out for a while. Um, and the Lord showed me 20 years of trips, mission trips overseas, 25 years. And he sh took me through many of them. And there were five, there were five that he highlighted to me. These were the things that were highlighted to me. We went to Rome, and we prayed against the frequency coming out of the Vatican. The Vatican, uh, it, no, no, radio. And it was causing cancer. The frequency, all that's around. all around, because it was such a strong frequency. It was causing terrible cancer all around the city. And we prayed corporately, the team, against an illegal frequency and an ungodly frequency. It snuck up on the roof and blew the shofar in the Vatican. Okay. So we took off out of Rome to fly to another city in Europe. And as we took off, this was the whole team, as we took off, the electric grid went down from Rome all through southern Europe, and it stayed down for three days. When we flew back into Rome, three and a half days later, people were still in the airport because they had not gotten out. So what did God show? The power of corporate, spirit-led prayer. Corporate, spirit-led prayer, the power of that type of prayer, it shut down the grid. We have the newspaper article. It was pretty amazing. So that was... Number one for this year, we are going to realize in a greater way the power of corporate spirit-led prayer. We've got to have the power of spirit-led prayer individually first in order that when we come together corporately, that power manifests through all of us, okay? Number two, we went to all of the seven churches of Revelation. They are located in the nation that is called Turkey. The only church that was left at that time back then, I don't even know if it's there now, it probably isn't, was a very small Catholic church. Um, and they only had about 180 people in it. All the other churches are gone, and Turkey is, a, is an Islamic nation. There's pockets of Christianity, but not much. And this is what God showed to me. We must keep moving forward in faith and obedience in the spirit to multiply and extend the life of Christ in the church. We're the church. We're the church. We must keep moving forward, and it's what everybody said tonight. We have to keep persevering and moving forward. We can't stay in 2023. Number three, the trip to Ethiopia. 
during the mid in the middle of a, pol a political coup, which was uh, in the 2019, right before the head of the year, the new year started. Two of the two of the top generals were murdered. We couldn't get a ride to the airport to get out. We were waiting for the ride, for someone to say they would take us. We were in a meeting, and Jesus walked up to me face to face. And he blew in my face. You've heard this story. Little did I know that that was the beginning of the 10-year era of face-to-face. -face. Era is, it's a 10-year it's era of K, which means face-to-face. Face -face. As we, as we, and what was he saying to me? I'll tell you. Because when we walked, they dropped us off about a half a mile from the airport. And we had to walk to the airport because the airport was shut down. We looked at each other. They had, they had machine guns all around us. We had our little suitcases. We looked at each other, and we said, I love you. We don't know if we're going to get to the airport because they would be in the back in three seconds there. And we walked and got to the airport. And I'll tell you, what did the Lord say about that to us? He said, God came up to me face to face and blew into my face and my body, showed me everything he knew about me. And what was God saying? This is the year that we will know that he is a living and breathing God who knows everything about us and desires an individual and living, fiery relationship with each one of us. That was also said tonight, but that this is my version of it. Number four, the gathering in Thailand, we flew in and out in a 12-hour period. You know, when we went on these mission trips, they're not cushy. They weren't cushy. We were probably in the air more than we were on the ground, but when we got on the ground, we had to be spot on on the ground because we had to know everything that was going on around us. We had to sense the angelic host. So we got to Thailand, and uh, Chuck prophesied. We got to Thailand. We rested for two hours in the hotel, which was a house of prostitution. Every hotel in Bangkok is a house of prostitution. And we rested for two hours, and then we went to the meeting. Chuck prophesied that the fire, fire was going to hit the streets. Of, of Thailand, and the fire of God would fall and shift the church. We got done with that meeting. We got on the plane, and as, the, as we boarded the plane in the airport, riots broke out, and they set fires in all the streets in Bangkok while we were getting on the plane, and the plane was able to take off. Now, it shifted the church in Thailand. When we came back, that single moment shifted the church out of complacency and having a nice Sunday service into a militant, faith-filled hot spot that it was meant to always be. We're going to need that this year because that's coming. Okay? And the fifth thing is this. We had the secret meeting in Shanghai. They bought a building several stories high. They gutted the entire building. These were the Christians, some of them were the fathers. They bought a building, gutted the building, and then made one meeting with one of the rooms in that entire building and built it out to be a meeting coming, how many of us were coming, everybody got there that was supposed to be there, probably 200 people, all the doors were locked, the blinds were pulled, we had the meeting, it lasted a day, and then when we left that meeting, they did the, the room, they tore the room up, because so, no, nobody could know. Bulldoze your building. They bulldozed that building about a month later. 
What was God saying? He still requires us to lay down our life in furtherance of the gospel. We don't know that in America. We don't know it in America. We just spent 10 years in Asia. We've been followed. We've been things. Just saying, there's a lot we cannot say because of what, where we were and what we did. And um, we're really, we're a ministry here. We're a ministry that has a fellowship service, and you need to remember that. We're not churchy here. I don't want a church service where everybody sits in the pew and listens to one person. We want you all to be hearing God and moving with a fervency and a fire in your life, getting rid of all the excess, because in this coming year and the next few years to follow, the excess will hold you back, and it will keep you from fulfilling what God wants you to fulfill in your life. So these were the five things that God showed me. We're going to need them. Every single thing that you all said tonight, I loved that hot spot word. I loved it. I loved the perseverance. I loved all of it. I loved all of it. It was, it was excellent. I bless you tonight. The elders of this congregation have blessed you tonight. Men and women, elders in this congregation have blessed you. Because in Christ Jesus, there is neither male nor female. And don't forget that, because this is a year where that is going to be challenged. Because the Antichrist spirit hates women. Desire for women. And yet God is called the many-breasted one. And so there's a mother and a father dynamic to the Lord. Because even Jesus said, I would have gathered you like a mother hen had you seen the day of your visitation. And so I bless this congregation tonight with all of the words that have been spoken. And Lord, I pray, Lord, where we have deficits in any of these areas, Lord, that you would begin to fill us up with your word and your spirit in a way that we have not been filled yet. Lord, we lay down our ideologies, our opinions, which usually are fully against your wisdom. And we ask, Lord, that we would have instead your manifold wisdom flowing through us, God, and that we would be that hot spot. We would be that, uh, the portal of your spirit in our workplace to witness like Darlene did. And Lord, all of these things, Richard witnessing to his grandson. Father, we're asking this year that we would be fiery, evangelistic lovers of God that flow in signs, wonders, and miracles, and that when we preach the word of God, it is with power and authority in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we decree tonight the demonstration of your power flowing through this body. And Lord, we thank you for it. We love you, Jesus. We lay our lives down before you again and ask you, God, Lord, just to burn the sacrifice. Just We lay our lives down and ask you to just perfect us, Lord God, and touch our lips with your fiery coals, that we would speak those words to those that you put in our path. In Jesus' name.